Hi, I'm Jim Jubeck and welcome to my YouTube video for August 25th. If you want more of my stuff, uh, you can go to my free site, jubeckpicks.com. Uh, if you want more and more with portfolios that include ETFs and commodities and options, you can go to my paid site, that's jubeckam.com. You'll find links to that down below. Please remember to like us and subscribe. Okay, today's topic, China is what a climate emergency looks like. If you follow the headlines at all, that you're aware of the big drought in Western China, uh, that's not too terribly surprising. Northern China is the drier half of the country. Uh, the Northwest is semi-arid. So the fact that there's no water up there uh, right now when we've got drought in the Southwest shouldn't be a surprise. The big surprise is in the South of the country, which is the wetter half. And here what we're having is a huge, huge, huge drought that what we've got is about 40% less rainfall than average falling into the Yangtze. This week we had four government departments come out and declare a emergency. As I said, this is extraordinary because this is normally the wet part of China. Uh, there have been plan long-term plans to take water from the south and ship it to the north. I don't know that those plans are still viable, but it's clear that there's not a lot of excess water anywhere uh, to ship it anywhere. Okay, so what's interesting to me about this is that we sort of know the general effects. The, you know, people, uh, there's not enough water, you've got to uh, ration water, you've got to uh, figure out what, what crops you're going to irrigate, and you worry about yields and all that. What's interesting to me about this and what has ramifications, I think, outside China is the second layer consequences. So, for example, um, about in Sichuan, about 80% of the electric, electrical power comes from hydropower. No water, uh, no hydropower. Therefore, we've got rolling blackouts, rationing of electricity. Uh, and this is important because Sichuan, China's policy has been to try to move um, a lot of its man export manufacturing industries from the coast further inland. So Sichuan has become a pretty big center for all of this. Okay, so obviously when you've got a blackout, you don't produce things. First level consequence. Second level consequence is that China is, is managing to produce a lot of its own corn, uh, has made this, made production of grains uh, a big national policy. Those areas are clearly going to get irrigated. Uh, and it doesn't look like we're going to see a big drop off in production from those areas. On the other hand, uh, most of Chinese vegetables come from unirrigated fields that are probably not going to get a whole lot of access to water. They come from small farmers uh, and they're all local. That, that cities get their produce locally. It's carted in every day by the farmers. There's not a big logistical system set up, since there's no need for it, to get produce from far, from far away areas to cities. So there are no uh, big fleets of, of refrigerated trucks meant to move stuff like we do from California to New York City. And that's going to be a problem. Second thing is that, well, if China's going to be able to produce corn, you wouldn't think there's going to be a pork problem. Well, there is going to be a pork problem. This is maybe a tertiary uh, effect because pigs need to be air conditioned. In the industrial methods for producing pork, you have huge, huge pig, pig sheds. Um, and the pigs generate a lot of heat, and the pigs, if you're having sun pour down on that, the, that generates a lot of heat. And at some point, the pigs get sick and die. So you've got to air condition that. Well, pigs don't deal very well if the air conditioning has, is suffering from rolling blackouts. This drought um, is real problems for pig production. Now, this is a particular area in China, and the point really is not so much that, hey, if you're living in Miami, you got to worry about the effect of the pig farms because there aren't any. But what it really suggests is that in this global climate emergency, uh, the effects are going to be popping up all over the place. It's going to be like a global game of whack-a-mole, as in where the, the problem crops up. And it's going to be a lot of it's unexpected. We're going to have infrastructure uh, that is designed for one thing, having to, do, having to deal with another thing. Uh, it's going to make this a very, very volatile time for the economy, for economies, um, because the patterns that held in the past aren't going to hold in the future. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember, if you like this, uh, please like it. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. For more of my stuff, you can go to my free site, that's jubeckpicks.com, uh, and my paid site, uh, jubeckam.com. 
Uh, links to those are down below. Uh, in September, on the paid side, I'm going to be doing a, a special report on, on water stocks. So uh, think about subscribing and tuning in. Thanks very much for watching.